played golf late, played every sport other than golf, and as my body has deteriorated, I now am left with golf. Oh. And even that doesn't go so well. So, uh, so long story short is, the goal here in this talk is to familiarize folks with the common injuries. I think Chris has sort of outlined those. I'll tell you what we do to help treat and maybe get you back to sports, and then we can talk about some specific issues. So just a common, this is common every day. I probably see this every day in my practice. On average, I'll get somebody 50 to 60 golfing. They'll come in with sharp pain along what we would consider the inner, usually the inner aspect of their knee. And they'll say, you know, Doc, hey, I felt it on my follow through and I've been icing it and taking anti-inflammatories. My knee was a little swollen. And that is kind of a classic presentation for a torn meniscus. How many of you have a torn meniscus? So there you go. Now we can all raise our hands with that. So um, as, as Chris laid out, the golf swing is one of the more violent, actually, ballistic activities that we do in sports. And we think about tennis, pickleball, golf as being, these are the sports I'm going to do in retirement. It's pretty funny. They're really not made for the <laughs> joints that are, that are going. They're really not. And, and we say that, yeah, I say that in jest, but I love, you know, if you, they, they're starting to look at the pickleball swing. It is not a gentle sport, nor, nor is the golf swing itself. The good news is it's relatively low impact. So high shear stress, high rotational force, but low impact. So, so when we talk about the golf swing, so, so we get in back to when can you play after a meniscus tear, and we'll talk about that. Should you play? But so golf swing analysis shows just the force on your lead leg at about four times body weight, four and a half to five times body weight. So that's equivalent or higher than jogging during the golf swing. So take less swings, it's better for your knee, right? So, um, and all of this, especially the downswing, happens in less than a quarter of a second. So huge stresses for short periods of time. It would be less stress overall in the knee to jog 18 holes than to play 18 holes, interestingly enough. Um, so we, you know, we say, yeah, you can get out and golf, it's great for you, but it, it shows you that, you know, and the knee itself is probably the third most common complaint to orthopedics. Of course, you can all guess number one is back, and number two would be lumped in wrist and, and elbow injuries. So you know, if you take golfers and tennis elbow, that's number two. But knee injuries would be the third most common. So um, the most common problems you're going to see, meniscus tears that Chris talked about, that is the cushion cartilage between the tibia and the femur of your knee. Um, arthritis, or the flare-up mm -hmm. of arthritis, tendonitis, which we talked about, and then ligament tears. Those are going to be the most common problems we see in the golfer, especially the golfer, that, um, especially the golfer that's committed to walking. Um, just to give you some background, the problem we all face here is that none of us is getting younger, and arthritis, as Chris mentioned, is a process that is going to occur in our joints. And I think a lot of people have misconception of what arthritis is. So your meniscus is cushion cartilage, entirely separate from the Teflon coating that is your cartilage that coats your joints. Every joint, your fingers, your, your shoulders. So as you lose that, think of it as losing, taking a wire brush and scraping the Teflon on a pan. That's what arthritis is. A lot of misconceptions about it's extra bone, it's calcium buildup. It's none of that. It's a wearing away of that cartilage. Genetic component, which we don't understand, Alignment component, so those of us that are really fortunate to be really bow-legged, we will get this disease much sooner. If we carry extra weight, if we've played a lot of sports with trauma, it accelerates the process dramatically. So there's a lot of components to arthritis. So is it conceivable you can have an 80-year-old with very minimal arthritis in their knees and shoulders? Certainly, if they had good genetics, if they didn't have injuries, if they didn't harm their joints, they may have no arthritis. So. It, it sort of generally goes with age, but not always. So um, the big one down here is what we see in America is a, a sudden upswing, the demand for joint replacements in golfers, tennis players, pickleballers at a much younger age. And that it's good and it's bad. It presents some pretty significant potential future implications. Um, so we'll talk about joint replacement on Going back to the meniscus tear, generally, how do we make the diagnosis? We make the diagnosis with pain, increased pain with twisting. Sometimes you'll have less ability to bend and straighten your knee. 
And usually you come in, you see, you see me, and I say, well, let's get an x-ray. We get an x-ray. It shows you don't have much arthritis, hopefully. And then you end up with an MRI, and that top picture shows you what a meniscus tear looks like. That black structure, these little, these little black triangles, they should stay black. If they're not black, that's fluid in your knee going into a tear. So that's what a meniscus tear would look like. This is an arthroscope that we use in surgery, then with a little grasper and biter, and we go in and we smooth that tear. And then talking about recovery, we get you after surgery to a guy like Chris, we get the swelling out of your knee, get the motion back, we get the strength back, and usually I will tell my patients if there isn't a lot of arthritis in your knee after you fix your meniscus, you can golf four to six weeks afterwards. If there's more arthritis, we want to slow that down. Um, so. Um, so adjustments to make to try to prevent meniscus tears and worsening arthritis, I think Chris talked about these. Um, the biggest thing, of course, is going to be a good warm-up, so you get muscle engagement, you have better proprioception, you have better feedback of what your knee is doing. Um, increased torque is the problem for meniscus tears, so turning that lead foot out, perhaps not rotating as much. Did you talk about spikes? You know, they've, they've done a couple of studies. Obviously, the old school spikes that no one wears were the worst. Still, the, the spike-less shoes will allow that foot to rotate just a little and not capture it, so that's probably a wise move if you're trying to preserve your knees.